To get regular updates, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. Hello friends, this is Dipali Shah from Vigzambin. In this lesson of the environment, we are going to be looking at the concept of biodiversity, its measurement and much more. If you are watching this show for the first time, do not forget to subscribe to our channel to get the regular updates. So, let's get started. Concept of Biodiversity Biodiversity is the variety of plant and animal life in the world or in a particular habitat. Measurements of Biodiversity The biodiversity is measured by two major components such as species richness and the species evenness. The species richness can be defined as it is the measure of number of species found in a community and can be further divided into the Alpha diversity, it refers to the diversity within a particular area or the ecosystem and is usually expressed by a number of species in the ecosystem. Beta diversity, it is a comparison of the diversity between the ecosystems, usually measured as the change in amount of species between the ecosystems. Gamma diversity, it is a measure of the overall diversity for the different ecosystems within a region. Species evenness, it measures the proportion of species at a given site. For example, the low evenness indicate that a few species dominate the site. Genetic diversity, the genetic diversity is the total number of genetic characteristics in the genetic makeup of a species. A single species might show high diversity at the genetic level. For example, human being has different genes such as Chinese, Indian, American, African, etc. India has more than 50,000 genetically different strains of rice and 1,000 varieties of mango. The genetic diversity allows the species to adapt to changing environment. This diversity aims to ensure that some species survive the drastic changes and thus carry on desirable genes. Species Diversity it is the ratio of one species population over the total number of organisms across all species in the given biome. Zero would be an infinite diversity and one represents only one species present. The species diversity is a measure of the diversity within an ecological community that incorporates both the species richness, the number of species in a community and the evenness of species. For example, the Western Ghats have a greater amphibian species diversity than the Eastern Ghats. There are more than 2 lakh species in India, of which several of them are confined to the India. Endemism is the ecological state of a species being unique to a defined geographical location such as an island, nation, country or other defined zone or habitat type. Organisms that are ingenious to a place are not endemic to it if they are also found elsewhere. A particular type of animal or plant may be endemic to a zone, a state or a country. The extreme opposite of endemism is cosmopolitan distribution. Species differ from one another, markedly in their genetic makeup, do not interbreed in nature. Closely related species, however, have in common much of their hereditary characteristics. For instance, about 98.4% of the genes of humans and chimpanzees are the same. According to the IUC in 2004, the total number of plant and animal species described so far is slightly more than 1.5 million, but we have no clear idea of how many species are yet to be discovered and described. A large proportion of the species waiting to be discovered are in the tropics. Estimated place the global species diversity at about 7 million. More than 70% of all the species recorded are animals, while plants including algae, fungi, bribe forage, gymnosperms and angiosperms comprise no more than 22% of the total. Among animals, insects are the most species-rich taxonomic group, making up for more than 70% of the total. That means, out of every 10 animals on this planet, 7 are insects. The number of fungi species in the world is more than the combined total of the species of fishes, amphibians, reptiles and mammals. It should be noted that these estimates do not have any figures for the prokaryotes. Biologists are not sure about how many prokaryotic species there might be. 
In general, the species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the pole. With the very few exceptions of the tropics, latitudinal range of 23.5 degree north to 25.5 degree south harbor more species than the temperate or the polar areas. India, with much of its land area in the tropical latitude, has more than 1,200 species of bird. The largely tropical Amazonian rainforest in the South America has the greatest biodiversity on the Earth. It is home to more than 40,000 species of plants, 3,000 of species of fishes, 1,300 species of birds, 427 of mammals, and 427 of amphibians, 378 of reptiles, and of more than 125,000 invertebrates. Why do tropics have the greater biological diversity? Speciation is generally a function of time. Unlike the temperate regions, subjected to the frequent glaciations in the past, tropical latitudes have remained relatively undisturbed for millions of years and thus had a long evolutionary time for the species diversification. Tropical environments, unlike the temperate ones, are less seasonal, relatively more constant and predictable. Such constant environments promote the Nietzsche specialization and lead to a greater species diversity. There are more solar energy available in the tropics, which contributes to the higher productivity. This, in turn, might contribute indirectly to the greater diversity. The importance of species diversity to the ecosystem for many decades, the ecologists have believed that the communities with more species generally tend to be more stable than those with the less species. What exactly is stability for the biological community? A stable community should not show too much of the variation in productivity from year to year. It must be either resistant or resilient to the occasional disturbance, such as natural or man-made, and it must also be resistant to the invasions by the alien species. Although we may not understand completely how the species richness contributes to the well-being of an ecosystem, we know enough to realize that the rich biodiversity is not only essential for the ecosystem health but also imperative for the very survival of the human race on this planet. Bioprospecting The nations that are endowed with the rich biodiversity explore the molecular, genetic and species level diversity to derive products of economic importance. Keystone Species and the Foundation Species Keystone species is a species whose addition to or loss from an ecosystem leads to the major changes in the occurrence of at least one other species. A classic keystone species is a predator that prevents a particular herbivorous species from eliminating the dominant plant species. The top predator such as lion, tiger, crocodile, jaguar are considered as a keystone species because it regulates all the other animal population indirectly. Hence, the top predators are given much consideration in the conservation. Certain species in an ecosystem is considered more important in the determining the presence of many other species in that ecosystem. If a keystone species is lost, it will result in the degradation of the whole ecosystem. For example, a certain plant species, for example ebony, Indian laurel, exclusively depends upon bats for its pollination. If the bat population is reduced, then the regeneration of the particular plants becomes even more difficult. Foundation species is a dominant primary producer in an ecosystem, both in terms of abundance and influence. For example, kelp in the kelp forest and corals in the coral reef. A flagship species A flagship species is a species chosen to represent an environmental cause, such as an ecosystem in need of the conservation. These species are chosen for their vulnerability, attractiveness or the distinctiveness in order to get the support and acknowledgement from the public at large. The few examples are Indian Tiger, African Elephant, Giant Panda of China, Mountain Gorilla of the Central Africa, Orna Gutten of the Southeast Asia and the Leatherback Sea Turtle. Ecological Diversity The ecological diversity refers to the different types of habitats. A habitat is the cumulative factor of the climate, vegetation and geography of the region. It includes the various biological zones such as lake, desert, coast, estuaries, 
wetlands, mangroves and coral reefs etc. At the ecosystem level, India for instance with its deserts, rainforests, mangroves, coral reefs, wetlands, estuaries and alpine meadows has a greater ecosystem diversity than a Scandinavian country like Norway. Biodiversity of India India is recognized as one of the mega diverse country rich in biodiversity and associated with the traditional knowledge. India has 23.39% of its geographical area under the forest and tree cover. With just 2.4% of the land area, India accounts for nearly 7% of the recorded species even while supporting almost 18% of the human population. In terms of species richness, India ranks 7th in mammals, 9th in birds and 5th in reptiles. In terms of endemism of vertebrate groups, India's position is 10th in the birds with 69 species, 5th in reptiles with 156 species, and 7th in amphibians with 110 species. India's share of crops is 44% as compared to the world average of 11%. India represents 2 realms, 5 biomes, 10 biogeographic zones, and 25 biogeographic provinces. Biogeographic realms are large spatial regions within which ecosystems share a broadly similar biota. Realm is the continent or the subcontinent sized area with unifying features of geography and flora and fauna. The Indian region is composed of two realms. They are the Himalayan region represented by the Pale Arctic realm and the rest of the subcontinent represented by the Malian realm. In world, the eight terrestrial biogeographical realms are typically recognized. They are the Nearctic realm, the Palearctic realm, the Afrotropical realm, the Indo-Malian realm, the Oceanian realm, the Australian realm, Antarctica realm, and Neotropical realm. Biomes of India The term biome means that the main group of plants and animals living in the areas of certain climatic patterns. It includes the way in which the animals, vegetation and the soil interact together. The plants and animals of that area have adapted to that particular ecosystem. The five biomes of India are the tropical humid forest, tropical dry and deciduous forest including the monsoon forest, warm deserts and semi-deserts, coniferous forest and the alpine meadows. Biogeographic zones Biogeographic deals with the geographical distribution of the plants and animals. The biogeographic zones were used as a basis for planning the wildlife protected areas in India. There are about 10 biogeographic zones which are distinguished clearly in India. Biogeographic provinces The biogeographic province is an eco-systematic or the bio-subdivision of the rams. In India, it is divided into the 10 biogeographic zones and 25 biogeographic provinces and the list is given in the description, you can download it. With this, we have come to the end of this session. Thank you for watching till the end. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel to get the regular updates. Thank you.